So now what we're going to do is try and close our wound, but this time we're going to put the stitch underneath the skin. So the skin, you may remember, has got a waterproof layer which we call the epidermis. Then underneath it, if we look inside in this simulated model, we should have that pink layer which is simulating the dermis. The dermis is what holds the wound together. And the dermis is where the, majority, the collagen is that's actually allowing the wound to knit together with something called the fibroblast. Below that, that yellow stuff is simulating fat. So fat doesn't hold sutures well. So fat is not a good thing to stitch to because as you actually draw the suture together in fat, it will usually want to just cheese wire out because it doesn't have the good tensile strength. Where the tensile strength resides is in that layer called the dermis. The dermis is really thick on the back. The dermis is really thin on the eyelids. You want them thin on the eyelids because you want the eyelids to be able to flex and bend. So when we're going to imagine now, we want to put our stitch at inside the dermis, not the epidermis, but inside the dermis, but outside the fat. That's where we want our stitch to be, if we call it a subcuticular, under the cuticle, if you like, of the skin. So we've got to start somewhere. If we want to pull this stitch out, in this case it's non-absorbable, so we don't want to leave it behind, we want to be able to leave the end out so that we can pull it through. If it's an absorbable subcuticular stitch where we want the wound to be held together for a long period of time, possibly months, to reduce the scar widening, then we can tie the stitch off underneath and bury it because we don't have to take it out. So let's start with our subcuticular stitch and this is one that we're going to take out say after two weeks. Because there will be no stitch marks across the wound, what we call cross hatching, because the stitch is buried, it doesn't really matter if we leave it in more than two weeks or take it out a little bit earlier if we want to, as long as the wound is healed. So we make our, again, 90 degrees to the skin, we bring out our needle into the wound. Hold it again, same as before, two thirds, one third, no different, and we now pick up the derm, pick up the dermis and, and we're trying to get into that dermal layer. And as we pull that through, we're staying underneath and bringing it down. Start again, mount and go into the other side, again into the dermis and pull it through. And you want to go a little bit ahead of the first stitch that you put in. So otherwise, you won't ever make progress. You won't move. So as you do that, you can see that my next stitch, that's where I've come out. I want to go in just behind the point that I've come out and go just in front. So I do the same on this side. Go just behind where I came out and make some progress and go in front. Pull my stitch out. As I pull my stitch out, I'll do the same and again. I'll say, here I am on this side. I want to start there, come out about there. And we'll do the same on here go through and come out. Now what should happen when I pull on this is that wound, depending on the stretchiness of this material, and this is sponge, not skin, is just starting to come together. And you can just see that, and that's the reason, and it's because this simulated material is arced and designed to spring apart that we've got that gap coming in. But if you can imagine that now from where it was, starting to come together, you've got the impression of our subcuticular stitch. So now we've come to the end of the wound and what we want to do is to leave this stitch loose so that it can be pulled out from one or either end whenever the wound is healed. So we simply bring that out, don't knot it, nothing like that, bring it out through here and you can see that wound looks pretty well closed. So. I could either suture strip that end there, suture strip that end there, or what I tend to do is put suture strips, which are paper tapes, across the wound like this, and then we can knot this over the top as a loop so it stops it getting in the way. Shall we have a look and see how we do that? So suture strips, Luca strips, any of these things come together in a, in a packet that's sterile. When you've opened them, they come already mounted on a piece of paper. The mistake 
that people make all the time is to take them off and hand them to you one at a time. They're designed like this with a gap to allow the wound to swell in between the distance that the suture strips have been mounted. So if someone takes this off and then gives them to you with a already one at a time, it's a bit pointless. That's what you need. And then you put the suture strips across the wound. In this case, they're all a bit long, but it doesn't matter. And you then hold that end, and as you pull, the suture strips go across. And that gap is there purpose-built to allow edema and swelling of the wound to come out as you go along. So we'll put the last couple of suture strips across the top, tear the paper at the top, bring the suture strips onto the wound, just apply them onto the wound, stick them down, and as you pull this backing paper off, those suture strips should sit exactly where we want them. That's just how to do it. So keep them on the paper and use them straight. Now, one of the ways we said we could either leave these here and cut that flush, cut that flush there with a, with a needle holder and stick them down, or just tie them over the top. We'll tie them over the top just using a, a tie like that, and you can then leave that there for the patient to then bathe, shower, do what they want after their operation. So we'll do that now. Take the needle off. Always keep your sharp straight so nobody gets injured. And I'll just open that again for you and just tie that down. Here. Yeah. One top tip is you don't want the thing to unravel as you're doing that. It doesn't matter if it's loose because it's not adding to any strength of the wound. It just means that we can then cover that with a dressing. The patient can then get in the bath or shower and then when they come to have their stitches out in two weeks time, we just cut that end here or that end there and pull.